Hey guys, and welcome to Doing Things Dance Way. So here again, I'm on the C-Max, and this time the 12-volt battery has so weak and so annoying that it's time to replace it. We, we get a lot is on the radio. It'll say uh, shutting down to save power. Uh, I have times when it just won't turn on at all. I've had to jump start it. So I've watched several of the videos online on YouTube, and quite honestly, I just see so many flaws in what they're doing or the camera work is so, like they're holding a cell phone or wearing the camera, I'm gonna try and do a better job just to not nauseate you guys <laughs> as you watch this. This is not a hard job. Uh, there's high voltage around, but it's all completely covered up and safe. And so I will point to the areas to be concerned about. But otherwise, this is just mostly about pulling out screws and disassembling and pulling pieces of plastic out. Don't go away, it's doing things Dan's way. Okay, a couple of tools you'll need. Uh, you'll need a 10 millimeter socket with a rather, maybe a deep socket would be great for that. Uh, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter probably to pull the battery uh, terminal off. And a ratcheting wrench like this is a great tool for that. Uh, you're gonna need a real thin bladed screwdriver to get behind little plastic clips and to pry them loose. And a panel removal tool like this, or perhaps like this, uh, will be helpful as well to get a little of these uh, pop rivet plastic pieces out. So I'll have a couple of these around. Of course, I'll have uh, links in the description down below for all the stuff that I use, just so that you can uh, quickly uh, reference that and grab it if you need to. Okay, so to disable the high voltage battery, what I've done is I've opened the doors in the car so that the car uh, has a chance to uh, turn on and then turn back off again. So all the screens are dead. It's not actively trying to do anything. Uh, so the high voltage battery is basically neutral. It's not being used, it's just sitting there. So behind the the rear passenger side, there's this little compartment. I'm just gonna open that up. That is your high voltage disconnect. Now, uh, what I would suggest you do is to wear uh, some heavy gloves. Uh, I've already done this, and so I know this battery is not in condition where there's any damage or anything. If you have any kind of suspicion of damage or this is a salvage vehicle, you definitely need to approach this with appropriate PPE. Read the service manuals and all the precautions and warnings before you do this. For the sake of clarity, so you can see what I'm doing, all we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this handle and slide it left, and then we're gonna pull this towards us quickly. So we're just gonna take this and slide it out, and it just pops right off. Now what this is, all this is is two terminals and a short circuit inside here. So what I'll do is I'll take this and take this separate from the car completely, just so no one else decides to come back in and try and stick it back in there. <laughs> and we don't put our fingers up in that hole, of course, because that is where the 300 volts of the battery is, you know, with respect to ground is on one of those two terminals. So I'm just going to close this back up again, just in case, you know, the worst case, some little kid crawls in here and decides to stick their finger in the hole. All these pieces. Okay, this gives us our first look that the battery is right there. Okay, so what we have is T30s, one, two, three, four, across the top here, and everything down here is a T25. So let's put that in a driver and spin them up. Now something I'm gonna do right now is that what I see right here is the 12 volt power leads. And if I'm using a tool such as this, and I drop it right across here, I could short between ground and 12 volts. So just for a simple safety, this is something I didn't see anybody else doing. I'm just gonna throw a rag right on top of the battery just to uh, save myself any possibility of arcing across all of that until we get all this plastic out of the way and we're using all these tools over the top of it. Okay, so we did the T30 up there. Let's grab a T25 and do the bottom. Okay, those are the four obvious T25s. And then now we have a deep socket uh, 10 millimeter. And then it's done. Okay, at this point, this, these pieces should be able to pop out. Okay, there's that piece. Okay, and now this part is completely loose. So we can get him out of the way. Okay, let's see what we got here. So what we have, now this is the energy addition, which means this extra section of battery is here. If you have the 
uh, CMAX hybrid, you probably don't have all of this stuff in the way. You may just have this one piece. It's just a little bit different design, but the concepts are all the same. Now here for the, the energy, we have to pull off this whole duct here and this duct here and take out this bolt and this bolt there. And these are uh, eight millimeter heads. Again, another reason I have a towel on the positive terminals of the battery so I don't drop this and short something out. Okay, so that's loose. Oh, there it goes, good. Okay, now we need to remove these two rivets and there's one in the bottom center down here. This is where this set of tools comes in. A variety of these is, is great. So start off with, if I can get this one in. Notice there's a flat edge right there. That's where you wanna start on these. If you can get your tool in like that, just rock it back and forth until it's out about a quarter inch and then just grab it. It pulls up. Now, that's kind of the key. Now we're gonna pop it loose. So you can see that was a piece like this. You push it all the way in, it locks it. So the trick is to get start off in that flat section right there with your tool. You can get under there, then you get that part off, get the key out, and then you can get the rest out. Now it looks like the key was completely lost on this one here for me. Okay, now, some people have said that this is the hardest step when you're taking the car apart, is to get out this bottom uh, pin, which is right down where my finger is. Let's take a look at that. There we go. Now we can get in there with this tool. Pin out. Okay, now with the pin out, we can get behind the main body of it and pry it out. Okay, so that's the first piece of, uh, of ventilation for the, uh, the battery. Okay, so with that out of the way, now we need to get this piece out of the way. Again, another, another huge reason here not to have the battery terminal exposed is I'm working with a tool that's very close to it. This piece comes right out, just like so. Okay, so now we can see where the battery is in relation to things. Okay, so at this point, now that we have the battery exposed, um, I'm gonna cover this back up, and we're gonna remove the negative terminal first. If I remove the top positive terminal, in the process of using the tool, I might short against something, because I can go from positive to negative. Here, if I remove just the negative and set it aside, I can touch negative to chassis negative and it doesn't hurt anything. Now this is high voltage here. It's not particularly high power, but the orange wire always indicates high voltage. So we do want to keep our, our distance from this in terms of respect, but this isn't just going to electrocute you. This is not, you know, unless there's a break in the wire or something, this is not going to zap you. So what I'm going to do now is just take off this, uh, this is the 10 millimeter nut and just set this whole negative terminal aside. Okay, so now that that's loose, okay, now there's no good place for me to put it. So I'm just going to stuff the rag between this and ground so that it can't remake contact with the battery terminal. Okay, so what we want to do next uh, to give us more uh, slack and stuff is to take this one sensor uh, connection off. How am I doing that? Okay, we remove this one. It should make back removing the battery easier later. And then I'm going to loosen up this 10. Okay, so now with this loose, I can pull this assembly up and out of the way. 
case what you need now is a very long eight millimeter wrench to drop all the way down and get onto that head right there. It's basically a very long bolt that goes all the way down to uh, under the car. Okay. Wow, look at that rust. Okay. And the corrosion's on the inside of the car, so I'm guessing some battery leaked in here at some point. Let me remove the wedge, which is also, ugh, covered in rust and probably battery acid debris. Okay, you have two choices here. One is you can disconnect the battery and remove this connector and make life a whole lot easier, or you can eventually scrape up this wire like crazy and tilt the battery completely on its side to pull it out of here, even though batteries say straight on them, like, do not tilt. <laughs> this battery is disconnected and we waited 10 minutes. We're gonna disconnect this connector to get it out of the way. So this is like a multi-step thing. So you're gonna pull back on this little clip. That's step one. You're gonna push on that first little terminal. You see that part raises up. You're gonna push on that and pull the connector out. It comes out about a quarter inch and it stops again. That's step two. And then step three is we're gonna come in here and lift up. And it's actually lifting up on that spot and that spot right there. So we're gonna lift up on that little tab and it's gonna slide right off. And now what we wanna do is to get this out of the way from the battery removal processes. I'm just gonna tuck it like this. And now you can see we have, you know, instead of being out here, we have like a bigger space to try and, you know, get this battery out of. Now, if you haven't done so already, this is the breather hose. It's attached like this one right about there. So that just pulls right out just to get it out of the way. Let's just slide him so he doesn't get in the way of us removing the battery. One way to make getting this out easier is you can take a strap and actually just run around it. It's just a, a load strap. What that lets us do is it lets us pick it up down the center line of the weight of it. And we can pull straight up. Like so. And use this hand to guide and move other things out of the way. But this hand is, your right hand is taking the weight and your left hand is just guiding. She goes. Now, the whole time I'm doing that, I'm being careful of this guy. That's like the biggest risk, I guess you could say. I mean, it beats having all this in the way. I do not like how steep you have to tip the battery in there. First step, I'm going to get this breather on so I don't forget it. Okay. Again, we connect positive first, but I'm going to do the, uh, I'm just going to put this in the way for the moment, just to keep that from connecting to anything. Okay. And we're going to put back our, our bracket piece and our really long bolt. Kind of clean those up a bit. Sure, all those cables are just laying nicely and not stressed by anything. Put on our negative battery terminal here, get the rag out of the way. Yeah, this may give you a little, little spark. Deal there. Tighten that guy up. Okay. At this point, I'm being really careful. In fact, I should just cover this back up again. 
Again, if I drop a tool, <laughs> if I drop a tool across there, I'm gonna get 500 amps in my face. That's not cool. Okay, so now we can come back to our high voltage connection and pop that in place. So we'll one, two, and then we're gonna lock it. It's basically butted right up against the, the housing there. And if you're questioning that, go ahead and release that. Push the button, you'll see it slide back one notch. And that's all there is to it. So before we connect the high voltage battery, let's go ahead and get uh, these two ventilation pieces put back together and uh, get the rest of this connected. Okay, we don't need to put a pin there because the pin actually starts, goes through this one and this one. So I'm gonna put this on, get all it lined up, and put in our two bolts here and here. Okay, so to install this, we're gonna come in here with the pin removed and jam it in the hole. We'll separately take the pin here and get it in the middle. Okay, there we go. Now that we have those two in, we still have to find replacements for these two. So I have this nice kit. It gives me all sorts of options and variety to work with. And I will just find one that has the right size uh, smaller diameter. Okay, this is a six millimeter. There we go. And another six. Now these, like once you've used them, like they're done. <laughs> uh, they don't come back. But that's the reason to get a, a kit like this. I've used this for so many projects. In fact, I've gone through these two the most, I guess. Okay, so we have that bolt, that bolt, this push pin, and these two push pins all installed. I think we're time, well, let's see, we got these two down here are done and tight. So we can now go ahead and put all the plastic body panels back on. Okay, now we can start reinstalling all of our plastic. Now we can install our four T25 screws. Now we can remove our fabric, exposing the 12 volt connections to the battery again. Okay, now that we're done putting it all back together again, and we're ready to reactivate the high voltage battery. We're gonna open this back up again. We're gonna take our piece and we're gonna put it back into this kind of T shape. This is the, this was the closed position and that is the open position. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna line it up in there and really quickly, we're just gonna slide it in to that position, to where it's engaged. Slide it closed, lock it. And that's it. Put the seats back up again, and the high voltage battery is now connected to the car. Everything comes up clean. Now, it's very possible that you will have a whole series of engine lights, in fact, when I first did this, I had to go through and use an ODB scanner to uh, blank out all of the, you know, reset all of the error codes that had to come up as a result of having uh, the bad battery. Uh, it's something else that's just silly and annoying, if I put this back in accessory mode, is that your windows lose their mind. Oops. You lose your auto down function, or your auto up function. So I can push all the way down and the window will go all the way down. But when I lift up on it, it doesn't know how to go all the way up to the top anymore. So the way to do this, to reprogram it, is you just pull up, you just pull up on the on the switch and hold it until the window goes all the way up. And you hold it there for a couple seconds and then release it. And then click all the way down. And then activate it and it should go back up. 
you also do that on both the driver and the passenger sides. So if you don't have your own ODB uh, reset tool or scan tool, uh, I'll put a link below to just one simple one that I use. This one's nice because it works with both iOS and Android, and it does so by creating a, its own Wi-Fi signal. So you'll plug this into the car in the ODB port, and you'll scan on your phone for an access point that you definitely won't, rec won't recognize. Uh, you'll connect to that, and then you can just use any of the open uh, available uh, App Store based ODB scan tools. So I'll put a link to maybe the one I, I use below. Uh, but you can go through there and you can see all the errors and then you can go through and clear all DTC codes. And that should clear up uh, the majority of things that are happening. And it might take more than one attempt to do so. So this car has two ODB port uh, possibilities. There's one right here that you can plug into. And then perhaps more uh, conveniently, there's actually one right there that you can plug into. Now what I'm showing you here is using an ODB scanner uh, and you want to download the, the Forescan uh, app and you might need to actually uh, purchase it to get to all the menus that I'm going to show you uh, for the services menu in particular. But for six bucks, it's totally worth it and it gives you a lot of detail. So let's just show you how to use the Forescan app here. I've set up a few different items to track. So if I press play on this, you can see that I'm seeing that the vehicle battery age is 478 days. So that's clearly a couple of years. Makes sense because the battery was replaced about a year and a half ago. Going into the services panel, you can see there's a whole series of modules here that we can uh, request uh, service updates or calibrations on. So we scroll down here to the bottom. You'll see that we have a, a system called the body control module. And the first item there is battery monitoring system reset. So if we click on a little information icon onto the right there, um, you'll see it pops up and tells you, okay, this procedure resets the battery uh, specifically when the battery is replaced in the vehicle. So this is exactly what we want, right? So we're going to check box that and click the play button down below. And it's going to pop up and warn us that, hey, this, this isn't a safe procedure. If you don't mean to do this, don't do this. Uh, we say yes. And this menu pops up just again saying this is what we're going to do. Press OK to continue. And so pressing OK on that, it will pop up and say, okay, we're going to uh, reset the uh, start the reset process and it's going to wait five seconds and then ask you to turn the ignition off so you can turn the car off here uh, and press ok and then it'll count off five seconds and then it'll ask you to turn the ignition back on but this is not don't put your foot on the on the, the brake this is just accessory mode so now that we're back in accessory mode you'll see it pops up and it says a service procedure completed successfully and you should be good to go so now you can back out of this and you can go back into uh, the table mode and in table mode you can see that it says that the battery is now zero days old and so obviously that was a successful uh, reset of the battery now the other option is to do this with a manual procedure which for some reason uh, did not work on my car but did work on other people's cars so let me show you the manual procedure uh, if you don't have the obd scanner uh, and you can see if it works for you So we set the age that the car computer assumes that the battery has. We're going to turn on the accessory mode, not the full on. So I'll just press the button without the brake pedal. And then we're going to flash the high beams five times. And then just press the brake three times. One, two. And then we're going to shut it off and that should have reset the battery age in the computer. Well, that's about it. That's a wrap. Uh, the sun went down on me, so I had to pull some lights out. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, if I wasn't filming, this would have taken an hour. Uh, it's really not that hard. It's just lots of steps. So don't be scared by the high voltage battery. If you want to see more of content that I'm producing for the C-Max, as I basically repair everything on it and upgrade everything to LEDs, because there's no LEDs on the outside of this car, which is just silly, uh, hit up the links here, uh, smash in my face to subscribe. And until next time, guys, be blessed.